Brand new in Automatic CSS 2.3 is a feature for a boxed layout style for your website. In this training, we're gonna take a look at how to activate this feature and how to properly use all of the inputs associated with styling this feature. So what you are looking at here on the screen is a normal website layout where the content goes edge to edge of the viewport. Anything that has a background color, background image, background style, any elements that are told to go full width uh, will extend to the edge of the viewport. Now, this is a very traditional type of web design, but it's not the only type of web design. There's also what's called a boxed layout. And what we're gonna do is go into automatic CSS under the viewport tab, and we're gonna see under the body section, there is a brand new toggle for a boxed layout. We're gonna go ahead and turn that on. And immediately when you activate it, you're gonna see a bunch of other input options for styling your boxed layout. The very first thing you have to understand is that you don't have to do anything here. Everything is pretty much automatic out of the box unless you're looking for something super fancy. If all you're looking for is a very traditional boxed layout style for your website, you can go to the front end and refresh and you're gonna see that that's exactly what you have. So now we have a new effective website width we have a nice little box shadow defining the edges of that box layout style. And the, the one thing that is very important to note here though is the box layout width is different from your website width. So we have two different inputs. The website width, which has always been part of automatic CSS, defines the content width of your website. So the content width is when you add a container to the website or a section that has a container in it, the left edge of the content where it begins all the way to the right edge of the content where the content ends, that is the website width or the content width of your website. Now, in a boxed layout model, we have a secondary hard cutoff of your website, whereas a normal website that does not have a box layout it doesn't have a website width. The, it's just whatever size the viewport is. If the viewport gets to 8,000 pixels wide, the website will be 8,000 pixels wide. And anything that's supposed to touch the edge will still touch the edge. But in a box layout, we can create a fixed cutoff at any width we want. And in fact, in automatic CSS, we give you a new boxed layout width input where you can have full control over where that cutoff is. Now it's important to understand the behavior of a boxed layout. When we are on a viewport that is smaller than the box layout width, we are not going to see the box layout. It's going to look like a normal website looks. Nobody is gonna be, uh, nobody's gonna think that there's anything different about this website. But the minute we reach the box layout width, we are gonna see the box layout effect and the content of your website will no longer get wider than that boxed width. So that's very important to understand. Now, one thing you might be asking is, should my website width match my boxed width? I would argue no. And here's why. If we make it 1,366 pixels, which matches our website width right here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. We can refresh on the front end and we're gonna see that it's much narrower and we're gonna see that box layout effect even on smaller screens, which may be desirable for you. However, we're not gonna have a lot of gap between the edges of our content. Uh, now, this still may look good to you. If this looks good to you, then by all means, rock and roll with it. I prefer to have a little bit more white space in, in the websites. So even if I were using a boxed layout with, I may not go all the way to 1920, but I would do something bigger than my website width. You might do something like 1440. And so I'm gonna go ahead and hit save here. And then I'm gonna refresh. And we're gonna see we have yet a little bit more white space. We might even be able to go to something like 1600. Hit save. We'll take a look at what this looks like. And even more white space still. That actually looks pretty good to me without going full all the way to 1920. The point here is that it's really up to you. You have full control of the box layout width. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is the device background color versus the website background color to make sure that nobody is confused here. The website background color is the background of all of the content areas of the website. 
which on a normal layout would reach all the way to the edges of the viewport. But on a box layout, our content ends at a fixed point, and then there's really nothing beyond that, except you can change the color of what people see in this new background area that is defined. So I'm gonna go ahead and instead of white for my device background color, I'm gonna go ahead and put our website's action color in. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save changes, and then I am going to refresh. Now you see, instead of having just boring white back there, I actually have my website's action color. Now this has created a new problem. Our box shadow that we had defined is now kind of, looks to be a little bit missing. It's a little bit hard to see. And it's also what I would say is the wrong color because we're using a black shadow on a, what amounts to be a purple background. And what we could do to make this effect a little bit smoother is we could have a dark purple shadow on a purple background. So that's very easy to do with the website box shadow input. So I can control any, basically any box shadow value that is valid, you can put into this box, even if it's a layered box shadow, that will work as well. Uh, but let's say I like the shadow overall, I just wanna change its color and I wanna make it a little bit heavier. So I can see the variable right here for my shade ultra dark trans 20, and I can simply switch this from the shade family to the action family. So it uses the same color from up here. And then instead of 20%, I'm gonna go with 40% and I'm gonna hit save. And now when we refresh on the front, we see that deeper shadow is back and the shadow perfectly matches the color that I'm using for my device background. Okay, now that we've got that back, let's keep, uh, let's keep on going, see what else we have to play with. So this is a little bit unique to Automatic CSS's box layout style. I believe that Bricks and Oxygen both allow you to create a box layout, but they don't allow you to add margin top to your box layout. So what you're seeing here is a website that goes all the way to the top of the screen, or I guess starts all the way at the top, goes all the way to the bottom of the screen. What you can do in automatic CSS is you can add a spacing variable. Like I can say my medium section spacing, hit save. And this is gonna create kind of a third dimension to your box layout style. So now your website effectively starts lower on the page and I can see that device background up top and I can see my shadow going up top as well. You don't have to do this. It's just another wrinkle in your ability to create a unique design. All right, so I'm gonna come down here and we're gonna take a look at border width. Border width. And you're gonna look at this and say, this seems rather limited. So you're gonna put in something like 15 pixels. First thing to understand is that these last three inputs all work together. Notice the border color is set to transparent by default. Notice the border style is set to none by default. Both of these values mean you're not going to see a border. So if you put 15 pixels in and you hit save and you go to the front end to see what happens, you're gonna notice that nothing happened because one instruction is saying, hey, the border should be 15 pixels wide, but the other two instructions are basically saying you should not see a border. The color is transparent and the style is none. So the first thing we need to do is set this to solid. And then we also need to, I'm sorry, not that. We need to set this to solid and we need to set this to a color. Now I'm gonna use another color from the action family. This is gonna be action light and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save changes. Now, when we view on the front end, oh, we can clearly see that our website now has a border. But if I go to the bottom, I'm gonna see that the bottom also has a border. Now, maybe you like that, but maybe you don't. The question is, can we, with one input, control every side of our box layout independently? And the answer is yes. You can do that with all three of these inputs, and this simply uses the CSS shorthand property for each of these items, okay? So for example, our width. The order of the values is always the same. Top, right, bottom, left. And actually, if you hover over this tooltip, it's gonna remind you top, right, bottom, left. And it's gonna remind you that this does accept a shorthand property. So what I'm gonna do is five pixels on the top, 10 pixels on the right, 15 pixels on the bottom, 20 pixels on the left. And we're gonna go ahead and hit save changes. Now we will come in and we will see 
that we have a very thin border on top, a little bit thicker border on the right, a little bit thicker border on the bottom, and then the thickest border on the left-hand side. All right, now that we've seen we can do that, I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to 15 pixels. And then we're gonna refresh and make sure that we are back to our even border style on all sides, we are. Now can we do the same thing with border color? I'm gonna go ahead and take the variable out for now and I'm just gonna say red, uh, white, blue, and green. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit save. We'll refresh this on the front end and we'll see. I would not recommend this. It's a very ugly uh, border style going on here, but you can see I can change the color of each side independently. I can also, by the way, let me put my variable back in for action light. So that's on the top, on the right, on the bottom and on the left, but on the bottom value, I can actually replace this if I can copy it properly. Um, let me just use the delete here. All right, and I'm gonna write the word transparent. And we're gonna go ahead and hit save. So this is one way you can remove a border from a side effectively. Now, you're still gonna be able to see it because the box shadow is actually impacting it and it's kind of uh, alluding to it, the fact that it's there, right? Um, if I wanna remove it completely, we can see how to do that in just a second. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is play with my border styles and we'll actually put this back as action light. All right, um, let's go ahead and hit save and make sure that we can see that. So now we should see our border across the bottom again, and we do. All right, now we're gonna play with the border style, top, right, bottom, left, okay? So on top, we're gonna be solid. On the right, we're gonna be dotted. On the bottom, we're gonna be dashed. And on the left, we're gonna be inset. I don't know, I'm just making up stuff. We're gonna go ahead and hit save. And we're gonna refresh, okay. So now you see a solid on the top, dotted, dashed across the bottom, and then inset on the left-hand side. Now we can also say we're gonna be solid, solid, none, solid. So this is another way to completely remove uh, the border from one side. So we're gonna refresh. We see nice even border across the left, top, and right. But when we get to the bottom, there is no border whatsoever. So again, just going to show that you have full control over all sides of, of your box effectively. And I wanted to make sure that we understood what the shorthand property looks like, how to use it, the fact that this does accept shorthand property for these values. And that should really give you tremendous control over this box layout. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to jump into the community. We are all willing and able to jump in and help you with anything that you need or that you're confused about. As always, if you like this video, hit like, drop a comment below, and I'll see you soon again. I'll see you again soon <laughs> with, with, with more new features. We, we should do a bunch of outtakes. There's been plenty of outtakes for this video. Um, this is like the third or fourth time of, I, I, it took me forever just to get through the intro, all right? And then um, the, the, you know, showing all the stuff is fine. It's the intros, the intros and the outros. I can't do, I just can't do them. So plenty of outtakes. We should do an outtakes uh, one day. Anyway, drop a comment below, hit like, and I'll see you again very soon with more new features. Peace.